In today's episode, I wanna give you 25 things to do with your friends while on AIP that do not involve food. Being on AIP can be a bummer for one's social life, that's for sure. And I wanna make sure that you understand that you don't have to make it that way though, because I think as a society, we have really made events and social activities uh, about food, but we don't have to do that. We can actually do things with our friends that don't involve food. And it's kind of interesting because I think in the last like 10 years, I've been paleo or on some form of paleo for that long. And I've really kind of learned to make my events not about food. Or if I do have them about food, typically I invite people over and I make the food rather than having to like make somebody kind of comply to all of my dietary restrictions. But typically we go and do some of these activities that I'm going to mention that really kind of celebrate our friendship or our family or whatever it is and doesn't necessarily have to have food. It may take a little bit of convincing some of your friends that we don't have to go out to happy hour or we don't have to go out to dinner uh, to hang out that you can do some of these activities. But I think if you really truly have a good friend and they're a true friend, they're gonna support you in making you try to feel better. And in the end, you're gonna feel so much more energetic, pain-free, all of these kind of things that are gonna make you be able to go out and hang out with them even more. So it's like a win-win for everybody. If they support you now, then eventually you guys will be able to go do everything that you wanted to do anyway. So. Yes, try to convince them, but these are fun activities, things that I love to do and I think a lot of other people love to do. So try some of these out, try suggesting some of these and see how it goes. And you may realize that you actually like this a lot better and maybe it's a lot cheaper than going out to some expensive restaurant or happy hour. All right, now for the list. These are 25 things that you can do that don't involve food. So the first one is to take a walk or a hike with your friend. This is a great way to catch up on things, to talk, to get your exercise in at the same time. It does not have to be long. You can sit down on park benches throughout the way, or it could be really strenuous if you make it like to the top of a mountain or something. It's, it's kind of up to you, but it's a great way to hang out. And then if you do need food along the way, you can each have your own compliant kind of snacks. The next one is to play a board or a card game together. I know sometimes uh, people can get together into groups and play bridge or poker or these different kind of games, but you can play pretty much anything, uh, any game that you really like, just have a friend or a couple of friends come over and play. The third one is an escape room. That one can be fun because you guys all go into an escape room and then try to work together to get out of it. No food involved there. You can go to a museum, go to an art museum or a, a nature and science museum or something like that. Uh, just walk around, see the sights. You don't have to, to eat there. Number five is to go to a play. Like to go, you can go to a play or a musical. Go sit there and watch this and it can be a fantastic time. It's something that we've been doing with our children and we all love it and it's so much fun. Uh, then you can go see a comedy show. That's also a lot of fun and you get a lot of laughs, which is a great source of medicine essentially for your body is to laugh. You go to the zoo or an aquarium. If you don't have kids, this could be fun because you may not have done this in a long time. And if you do have kids, then bonus because then you bring your kids along and they'll have a great time as well. If you happen to be in a snowy, cold, mountainous kind of environment, you could go skiing or snowboarding or snow tubing or cross country skiing or snowshoeing or any of those kind of activities that get you out. And again, this is just like going for a walk or a hike. If you want to have a snack along the way, then each of you could eat whatever you need to eat via your own personal diets. You could visit a botanical garden. Now it's spring here in the US and it's a beautiful time of year to go do that. Go see all the beautiful flowers and the flowering trees and get out into the fresh air. This is such a wonderful activity to do uh, this time of year. You can go to an amusement park, go have some fun on some roller coasters and act like a kid for a little while. You can go apple or berry picking. This one's a really fun one to do. Um, if you have kids, they love to do this, but I also love to do this as my, you know, as an adult, because I will pick a whole bunch of berries, for example, and then go home and make a jam. Um, but you can make, you know, a crisp. There's AIP crisp or crumble recipes out there that are delicious. 
Um, same thing with apples. You can make applesauce. I mean, just make, you know, so you can do the whole thing. Like you could spend the day with your friend and go berry or apple picking and then make the jam or the applesauce or whatever it is. And then maybe make some apple crumble or berry crumble and eat that. The next one is to take a crafting or painting class together. I know this one, we, around here, we have so many different kind of options where you go to a painting class or someone could come to you and a group of friends and they teach you step-by-step step how to make a certain kind of painting or you could do, um, like they have those terrarium ones that you like, they put a little cactus and rocks and things in there. And then there's like another one where you could go and you paint boards, uh, that, like for decor for your house. There just seems to be so many different kind of options these days. And these are great. A lot of times they are bring your own beverage, but make a mocktail, bring it. That's what I do. I just bring mocktails a lot of places I go because I don't really drink a lot of alcohol these days. And then another idea is to alternatively pick an idea on Pinterest and then go get the materials for it and have your friends come over and you guys all try to craft that thing. Sometimes this will work, sometimes it won't. And another idea is one of my personal kind of favorite things to do is to make cards for people. So you can go to a, like a crafting store, like a Hobby Lobby or Joann's or Michael's or wherever you have and get, they have stickers, they have like scrapbooking stickers and you can get the puffy kind or all these different kinds or they have like flowers and all these different things or stamps and then you can make cards for people and maybe stock pile up for the year just have an afternoon where you guys make a whole bunch of birthday cards mother day cards teacher cards all kind of cards that you would need for the year and just make them in an afternoon it's a lot of fun and then you have this take-home thing that you actually will use throughout the year and then another idea is if you are this kind of crafty person who likes to do kind of scrapbooking kind of things and you have a friend that happens to be having a baby soon, you could either do this for a gift for them without them knowing or a group of you could get together even with that person and make a scrapbook baby book for that person, but just make all of the things like the pages, but leave blank spaces for the pictures, the actual pictures. I got this as a uh, baby gift prior to my babies. And it was one of the best gifts I've ever received because then I didn't have to do all the work of putting all the scrapbooking all together, which didn't, wasn't gonna happen anyway because I didn't have the time after a baby. But that way all I had to do was just print out some pictures and stick them into the book. And then I have this beautiful scrapbook of baby pictures with all of the, you know, the scrapbooking stuff all done. And so that could be a fun project to work on with some friends. Or like I said, even if you have a friend who's pregnant, the two of you could work on it together. Another idea is to take an exercise class together. This may depend on whether or not you have the energy or the pain control or any of that kind of stuff to be able to do that, depending on where you are with your autoimmune disease. But there are definitely like more complicated, like spin kind of classes, but then there's also gentle things like gentle yoga kind of classes that you could do. Um, it's a little bit harder sometimes to catch up with your friends during these things, but it is still time spent with them and you're still getting out and about. A personal favorite one of mine is to take your kids to a playground or a park and sit on a park bench with your friend and just catch up. This requires no food, half the time, not even really any planning. You just kind of decide to go do something and you get to get out and enjoy the fresh air and you can do, you can just talk about whatever. You go to a sports game together if you're into sports, whether it's like your kid's sports game or go to a professional sports game. Another idea is to volunteer together. Now you go to a local like food bank or homeless shelter. I've gone to gardens for places that need weeding. I mean, there's just all kinds of volunteer opportunities and you can still chat and talk and catch up, but you're also doing a lot of good at the same time. Another idea is to go out on a boat. Now, if you have access to a power boat and a lake, you could go do that, of course. But if you don't, you could go canoeing or kayaking, rowboating, or go on one of those uh, paddle boats where you get on one of those big swans and go around and talk to, like, talk to each other while you're doing it or even like a paddle board if you wanna get some exercise and do that as well. One we do as a family a lot is something that you could also do with your friends is to go geocaching. If you're not familiar with geocaching, it's kind of like a treasure hunt. There are little containers all over the place. I think probably all over the world, I'm not really sure, um, where there may be just a little log book. You have to go find it or there can also be containers full of like little toys or trinkets and then you could trade out a toy or trinket. And they like, we do this a lot with our kids because we'll go on a hike and we'll look for a geocache 
and you use your phone and there's a geocaching app on the phone, um, I will link to that one below. I can't remember what it is offhand, but if you search for geocaching, I'm sure it will come up. But uh, you, you get the geocaching app on your phone and you find the nearby geocaches and then you use your app to, to locate it. It's, it's by like GPS. Uh, so you could either have a GPS device or your phone and then you find the location. And a lot of times you have to kind of search because it's not really that accurate. Like it's accurate within like a foot or two typically, but you have to look in under things or like in things or around things. And it's kind of fun. And uh, then you find the geocache and then you can log it. And a lot of times there's several of these along a hike or around a lake or, you know, any of these kind of outdoor kind of venues that you're at. And it's a, it's a fun little scavenger hunt. So that's definitely an idea that you can do with your friends. Another idea is to go to the dog park. If you have a dog, they probably need to run, especially if you have a puppy. I know that from personal experience. They need to run a lot, but just go to the dog park and let your dogs, you know, off and have fun while you chat. Another idea is to learn an instrument together. Something like the guitar or the ukulele. Uh, you don't necessarily have to get a teacher to do this, which probably would be a good idea if you're brand, brand new to it. But uh, YouTube has so many resources. Like we've been learning via YouTube how to play the ukulele lately. And the good thing about that is that it's really cheap too. Like they have 30 to $40 typically for an ukulele. Like you don't need anything super, fancy if you're just getting started and you learn how to play it together. It's great for your brain, something fun to do. Another idea is to go to the arcade and get ridiculously overpriced cheap prizes, but it's fun. You, know, you could just go and just play a whole bunch of games, act like a kid again. If you have kids, bring the kids, but you know, leave them at home too and just go and sometimes these things where you, it's like a kid activity, but you do it as adults without kids can be so much fun. And it reminds you of how much fun you used to have as a kid and how much more fun like you can have as an adult that you probably aren't having. And then the last thing is to go do random acts of kindness together. This one can be fun. You could spend like an hour planning out some activities that you're gonna go do and then go do them or just go do them. You don't even have to plan it. But like you could go to the coffee shop and leave some money or you go to the local grocery store and help people unload or go to a, I don't know, like a, a retirement home and help the people there or sing songs from the ukulele that you just learned how to make. <laughs> I mean, it's just, you could, the list is endless and there's so many resources online that you can look up list and list and list and list of things to do as random acts of kindness. But that could be a fun and really kind of heartwarming way to spend time with your friend as well. So if anything, I hope you've gotten some ideas from this, but also maybe it sparked some creativity in yourself that there are lots and lots and lots of things that you can do with your friends that do not involve food. And so you can have an amazing social life while on AIP or any restricted diet, whether it's Whole30 or Paleo or Keto or anything that you're on, because you don't necessarily have to do it around food. So I hope if anything, that's the point I'm driving home with you today, that you can have fun, nurture your relationships and really just kind of enjoy your life. And it doesn't mean AIP is like a sen death sentence to your social life, because it's not. So that's it for today. If you have not already gotten the password to my Paleo Freebie Library, where I have all sorts of resources for Paleo, AIP, Whole30, just lifestyle in general, just all kinds of stuff to make it all easier for you, make it all demystified, all of that kind of stuff, uh, I will put the link to that below. And I will see you next week.